Oh, we are live. Are we? Are we live? It says we're live. We're live? All right. We are live. I can't deal with that. from UFC. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I did get a lighter, by the way. It's fine. I brought it back up just in case. So what are you doing over here? Uh, I'm getting ready to smoke a cigar today. It's kind of cigar, huh? Yeah. Nice. See, we're a little choppy. How's the volume, though? Volume seems to be a little laggy. Yeah, we're laggy, dude. Why are we lagging? I don't know why we're lagging. What's going on? Uh, Tim from uh, uh, Dad Smoking Cigars has joined us. Hey, how you doing? Uh, really good meeting you over at Fuente, by the way. Yeah. Um, What do you call it? I, I'm sorry I haven't messaged you guys yet, but I do hope we can hook up and do something cool. Uh, I know we can. You guys are up. But, uh, you know, just want to point that out. Although, for those who can't see this, because if you're listening to the podcast, Frankie, there's some big old thing on my screen here. What am I seeing there? Uh, you are seeing what is known as a box of cigars. What? Uh, it is Viva La Vida. Nice. For those that have not had a chance yet uh, to try it, it is an amazing cigar. I actually tried my first one through Luxury Cigar Club. Uh, they sent us uh, one in our pack, and uh, I got to smoke it. You didn't. I was very jealous. And ever since then, I've been telling you how much I enjoyed that cigar. And we actually got to meet these guys at IPCPR um, earlier this summer. And, oh, man, what, what an honor it was to meet these guys. They, they've been in the industry for over 25 years. So even if Artisano Del Tobacco is not a name you're familiar with, uh, these guys have been around for a long time. Um, yeah, so. I was super jealous, by the way, that you guys smoked that. And it took me so long to get my own. Yeah. Um, but it was a great honor meeting them. Like you said, they're a lot of fun. They're good guys. And uh, cannot um, – Tell you how excited I am to get the word out to help spread that. Because uh, if you don't know about them, like you said, I think you definitely should now. Oh, absolutely. Um, they they met up with AJ Fernandez, and that's actually how their cigar came to be. They, they blended it with AJ. And besides that we are uh, smoking, uh, you know, I, uh, I saw that on your guys' show. I remember you talking about it. And I think someone said that they wanted to send you one um, uh, for him, actually, for, for Kyle. I remember somebody saying something about that. Tell me if I'm wrong or not. Um, we're smoking the uh, the Toro today, which is 54 by 6 inch um, cigar, and it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's just it's just a beautiful, beautiful cigar. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even wait for you to give me a description. I just lit up. I wanted it. I wanted it bad, guys. Yeah, again, it says uh, Artisan Del Tobacco's Viva La Vida, blended by Eddie Fernandez Toro 6 by 54 ring gauge. It has Habano Oscuro wrapper. Uh, it has a Criollo 99 binder and the filler's Criollo 98. Uh, yeah, Kyle has a couple in the mail on the way to him. Yeah, he's, nice. he's not going to be disappointed um, no matter what size you get out of this. It comes in five sizes right now. Uh, the Toro, obviously, the Robusto 5x54, Torpedo 6.5x54, and Grand Toro 6x60, which all come in 20-count boxes. Oh, nice 6x60 in there. And their limited edition Diadema Sfina comes in six and a half by 52 which only comes in a 10 count box these are limited edition super awesome cigars wow nice what do you call it? we were we were lucky enough to have also been gifted a really cool ashtray you can't see it on camera so don't worry about podcast land you're not missing anything there um but there are some photos of it online i believe yep um and it is phenomenal it is a beautiful all ceramic four um cigar holding uh, ashtray you need the other guy yeah here you go Frankie's getting another lighter. Um, every side says Viva La Vida on it. It has their, their logo right in the dead center. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, God, it's been so hot, guys. And uh have been paying attention to the live shows lately. I am glasses list right now. So getting work done has been very difficult uh, on my end. I, uh, I apologize for lagging on some stuff. But next week, I will be four-eyed again. And I'm looking forward to that very much. Um, Frankie has been doing his best to keep me from running into things and uh, keep me from making fun of me, like Trina. Huh. Trina over at Cigars and More, uh, who had a good conversation today. Yeah. And we might be doing something pretty cool next month on the 20... We are going to be doing something cool on that day, but it's later on in my notes. So uh, uh, let's stick to my show notes. Uh, Thank you. And then I'm going to just read them before you get a chance to say them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, Jasmine says, keep hydrated. Don't worry, we are. I'm drinking Rockstar. 
uh, which, as everybody knows, is probably uh, even more hydrating than water. Uh, so that's why I drink it. I don't know, but I'm actually having water, but there's sparkling, sparkling water. I love it. Yeah, this uh, oh, Cam's joining us. Cam, how you doing? Hey, Cam. I wonder why I can't see Cam's message here, but I can see it on there. Oh, there it is. Just popped in. Because uh, that's my stream over there. It's better than yours. Uh, it's more official uh, than your little little tablet over there. No, I'm just kidding. I really like that iPad. I'm jealous of that thing, too. Jealousy got the cigar first. Jealousy has a better iPad. Jealous, I got a box of cigars. It's called the Jealousy episode, Miguel. I'm just going to name the thing I'm jealous about. Um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We share the same birthday, but he looks so much better than me. I'm, I'm jealous. Jealous. All right, that's enough for my corner. Uh, this, uh, this cigar starts off uh, nice and spicy. Uh, woody, <laughs> spicy. It'll make you cough if you're weak. Um, case in point, Miguel. Thank you. Um, uh, that, that blew my mind. Right it's not that spicy to me. It's a good spice, but I don't. No, no, it's not an overpowering spice, but that's just the way it starts out on its profile. It oh, starts out with a spicy okay. kick, um, that wood is in there, and then you'll 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 transition away from that, and you'll get developing some really nice complex flavors. So mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much of it away because I want people to get out there and try it for themselves. Um, for sure. But I am a big proponent of this cigar. Um, as a matter of fact, I showed you um, my my five my five count, not my big one, but my five count travel case. Yeah. And there was one of these in there, got a fire, got a fire anniversario, um, angel share. And, an, and the fifth cigar is actually one I can't talk about yet because not only has it not been released, uh, but I was sworn to secrecy. So when you can only take five amazing cigars with you and uh, this happens to be one of them, you know it's a great cigar. 100%. I agree. Um, that's, a, that's your go bag right there of cigars. And you know what? Well, no matter what situation you're going to run into – you have some good cigars to choose from right there. Now, I do have a larger travel case. Yeah, was it a 10-count? Uh, it's about a 15-count, depending on how many you take. Um, okay. But, you know, I keep a bowl. I keep, you know, some Oliva Serie V's, um, Bloodline, Sinistro, Roma, uh, Southern Draw. Uh, another one of these, of course. Um, Cam, we are smoking Viva La Vida. And uh, then, of course, I have my other travel case, which holds uh, 100 cigars. That's a little less selective, more that, of a, That's when I'm going over for a weekend somewhere. Maybe, uh, yeah, overnight trip. Yeah. Uh, down down to Sandy. Actually, you know what? Shout out to Expose real quick. We should have taken the 100 count. Should have. We should have grabbed a bunch of our sticks that uh, we don't have time to get to right now, but we know we're going to smoke them because we love them and put them in our, our uh, locker over there. Yeah. We, we have a locker over at Expose, which is by far the best gentleman's lounge slash cigar lounge I've ever been to. One of the only ones I ever know of. Uh, but they're in the race. If there are any others, you got a lot of work to do to catch up to Expose still. Yeah. Uh, currently, Cigars and More does not carry this cigar, but I gave one to uh, Michelle. So he's going to smoke it. Hopefully, he's going to fall in love with it like I have, and he'll bring it in. Him and um, Dwayne, right? I gave one to Wayne as well, yes. Uh, Wayne, so, uh, for uh, those who don't know on the show, Wayne is a regular over at Cigars and More. He's a huge proponent of McAuliffe. Yeah, he is a hardcore McAuliffe fan. If we can get him to rotate this in one for every 10 McAuliffe he has, that means he's probably going to buy like 12 boxes at once. I honestly think if he smokes it and enjoys it like I think he will, he's going to buy them by the box. I, I agree, yeah. And I've had this size. I've had the Toro. I've had the um, the Torpedo. And i got to say, I think the Torpedo might be my favorite size of these, but I have yet to try the Diademus. No, that's well, that's pretty hard to get hold of. It is. Um, I haven't had the 60 either. Six by sixty, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't even know there was. We've, the, we've had the robusto. Now we're having the toro. We haven't. You, you haven't had the grand toro or the torpedo. No. Um, trying to rub it in my face, I guess. Whatever. I but that big guy, because um, we're having this conversation earlier today about larger ring gauge cigars, and how sometimes you're not going to get the same blend exactly because it's not. Right. It has to be blended differently. Right. And um, circumference, or not circumference. Excuse me. Surface ratio to what's inside of it changes drastically between sizes. Uh, I think um, I just think I'm a torpedo size kind of guy. There's certain cigars that I just really like in the torpedo. Yeah. Certain cigars I really like in the Lancero. Yeah. Uh, and then of course you know Figurado for my Serie V Milano. And the Andalusian Bull only comes in one size. It comes in perfect size. It comes in great cigar size. Now right away, uh, now that we're maybe a quarter of the way, a quarter of the way, quarter of an inch in. Yeah. Uh, the spice has pretty much died off, and you get this beautiful woodsy, um, nice rich black coffee flavor coming in yeah, yeah some like like 
extra toasted coffee beans. Mm -hmm. Like when you go past that aisle down in the uh, the grocery store, and they have the beans, you can bag yourself, you can grind yourself right there. Um, that smell. If you can taste that smell, that's what I'm getting right now. Yeah. Perfect it's a aroma of coffee. Beautiful draw. Great smoke output. Nice burn line. Um, yeah, I agree. A great cigar. Beautiful presentation. I love the the jester. Uh, kind of a New Orleans, New Orleans feel jester to the to the band and the box. Yeah. And the ashtray. Um, I like the name. Viva La Vida. Live the life. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's a, it's um, a greatly packaged. They, they were actually going to go with uh, Living La Vida Loca. But Ricky Martin had already taken it. Yeah, I believe he has his own cigar out too, and it's uh, called Menudo. It is. Um, but he grew out of it. He grew out of it. They had to replace him. He has no idea about Menudo. Um, I apologize for those references because that's some nerd. It is a delicious soup. That's a that's a nerdy ass joke. You know, well, that, was, that was terrible. I apologize. Oh my gosh. Just to get into some quick show notes here, uh, shipping is the Drew Estates Acid Twenty, the Cavalier uh, Genevieve Limited Edition Twenty Nineteen. Nice. Guardian of the Farm Night Watch. An Underground Shade Suprema, which we actually already have in the shop. It came in yesterday. Yesterday. And I did not even realize it was coming out. That's on me. Um, there are so many cigars to keep track of. Uh, something kind of slipped under the radar. One I should not have let slipped under is one of the Undercrowns, because I'm a huge fan of that line. Um, the Suprema, I don't know much details on it yet. I don't want to learn them yet. I want to smoke the cigar first. Since we have them on hand, we don't have to do, you don't have to watch the trailer for the movie beforehand and like, oh, can't wait. It's right there. Go ahead and watch that movie. Smoke that cigar. And I'll, I'll, if I like it, then I'll start doing some research on it. Right, right, right. Um, and it's nice to be able to do that sometimes, too. You go into your local humidor. You don't know what you're looking for. And then all of a sudden, something new pops in your face. Smoke it. Smoke it to see if you like it. If you don't, no big deal. Try it again maybe in a couple months. If you love it, find out more about it. You might find you have a, a perfect size. You know, you can ask your, uh, your tobacconist so they can bring it in. Yeah. Or uh, you just found yourself a new favorite, and then you want to learn more about it that way, too. And, and going back to the Viva La Vida, this is a cigar you can bring in every size, even the, the limited edition size, and it will do well. There will be a robusto person that loves it, a Toro person that loves it, um, uh, a person that likes to get specialty blends and specialty sizes that's going to love it. Uh, even that Grand Toro, people are going to love that Torpedo. They're also going to love it. No, people hate Toros now. It's terrible. No. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course you're right. They, that's some great ideas on sizes right there. And um, I know people say, like, oh, the, uh, the usual is about three sizes. Yeah. That's what you want to make sure you have on your shelves. But like you're saying, you bring in all of those, and you can easily have them on your shelf and see them all move. Oh, yeah. Because there's just something for everybody right there. Especially if you're enjoying these flavors, a nice, I'd say medium, medium plus a little bit sick. Stick. It, it's uh, it's known as a fuller cigar, but again, everybody's palate and everybody's strength levels vary. Yeah. Um, so for me, this is a high medium. Uh, for a lot of other people, it's definitely a full. I could see a beginner going, thinking this is more full, um, but... At the same time, if you're if you're already in it, if you're going those Perdomos, you know, like I really liked a lot twenty three. Uh, if you like that, if you're uh, if you can handle the five hundred five, you're gonna love this. Um, there's there's quite a few strong scars out there that I know beginners kind of test themselves with. Yeah, this could definitely be in that rotation to kind of wean yourself from that medium blends into something stronger without you know ruining your day. Oh, totally, absolutely agree with that. Um, back to show notes. The Mikiti, the Firecracker, is getting a re-release for 2019. It's already uh, went on sale on Monday. Yeah, posted um, on the page. I know, but this is just some show notes. You give me notes about that? And uh, I knew about that. Uh, I, I think they're probably already sold out. I wouldn't doubt it, honestly. Uh, two guys does a great job with their marketing that way. Um, you just forget, because they've been doing the show so long, how much knowledge is there. They get spout things off so quickly. Um, and not just, not just facts and uh, information, but their history. Mm -hmm. Like, oh... Through my shop, this and this I've seen happen over the years, and it rings true. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like how much they take care of the customers. It's very oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Um, if you get a chance to try the firecrackers, I would say my favorite so far has been the uh, Christoph. Christoph, yeah, uh, that was awesome, very strong. Um, and we also had the Cro-Magnon firecracker, did. that was phenomenal. We have the United one. United, oh, I'm, I'm just saying my favorite. No offense, United, but. That that Crow Magnum Firecracker is almost the same as the Knuckle Dragger, um, just a little size difference. So if you're out there and you want to try it, you have the closest thing still with that Knuckle Dragger. Oh, right? yeah. It is the Knuckle Dragger, right? The small guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure I get my sizes right because sometimes companies like to to give their their sizes cool names like that, and I appreciate that. 
but then it makes it a little confusing sometimes. It, it does. It really, really does. It's like, shit, did I remember this correctly? I really like the uh, the CAO America, and they have the monuments and the other sizes, and then I get those. The colors. landmark, yeah. the monument. Like, I honestly, I... Statuette? No, that's yes, not one. one. That's not one. Yeah, it's a little one. Called the, uh... No. Yeah. I'm going to look it up later. It's not. I was like, you're, you're lying to me. I am. I'm completely lying to you. You said it was such confidence, I almost believed you. I almost believed me. Nice. I'm trying to get a nice toasted nuttiness in there as well. I would say, yeah, toasted almonds. Yeah. Uh, toasted almonds. There's a good nuttiness going on. That nice bitter black coffee still there. Just a hint of that spice yep. and that nice wood flavor. Yeah. Yeah. 100% agree with that. I mean, you can talk about the, the chocolatiness, the coffee notes, the wood, the roasted nuttiness, um, about a lot of cigars. But it's the way that they meld together. And it's hard to tell, like, oh, I taste 40% chocolate and 30% this and 40% that. And, you know, it's it's the way that they the leaves mix together and are in that blend that make every cigar unique and different. And this one cool. is awesome. When you get to my level of cigar palette, this is getting – we have 30% um, chocolatey notes in here, which is at a 75% cacao chocolate. Uh, there is 25% toasted organic – California grown almonds, and that flavor. No, 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 sorry. I'm gonna try. Georgian almonds. Georgian almonds. Oh, okay. Which I don't know. If they grow them there. They don't. They might. The peaches. They could grow other things. No. I almost guarantee it. No. So we don't have oranges here. Nope. Just almonds. Yep. Nothing else. Nothing else. There's cows running around. There's cacao. Cows. Cacao. Anyway, Mitch, what's going on, brother? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you guys for tuning in live on YouTube. So if you guys are listening to this again, um, we are live on Thursdays. Not a really set time. We do our best to go around uh, 3, uh, if not a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Um, just so if you guys like to catch it early, uh, you can. But if you want to listen, um, that's exactly what you're doing right now, hopefully. Uh, it will be, again, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and SoundCloud at the moment. Not Spotify. Not Spotify. Not yet. But we were a little late today because we were at Cigars and More smoking another fantastic cigar. Ooh, yeah. Uh, the Esteban Career is Unforgiven. Our rep, Jimmy, uh, hit us up on Tuesday and said, hey, I'm coming in. You guys want to hang out? We said, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we sat out there with him and uh, smoked the Unforgiven and the Toro. And that is an amazing cigar. Um, I know Trina's going to talk to Michelle about bringing that in as well. Yeah. Um, that was one of my standouts from IPCPR. Again, I'm going to do uh, my top 10 standouts from IPCPR list. I want you to do yours as well. Oh, I will. That will happen. Um, and that definitely, this will definitely qualify in that top 10 list. Yeah. Um, the Unforgiven was powerful. It was flavorful. And it was an all-around great cigar mm -hmm. with some really unique sizes coming your way. Because they heard their fan base. They heard their customer. Like, they want a 70. And you know what they did? They gave him a 70 they ring They made gauge. a 70 ring gauge. Yeah. Six by 70. You usually hear of a 7 by 70, an 8 by 80, a 6 by 60. But a 70 by 6 is an odd odd size. The Medulla Oblongata, those are both 70 by 60s as well. They're and 70 they're, by 60s, huh? Oh, sorry. 70. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They're, the, they're 60 inches long. Wow. It takes a couple days so to smoke it. Long. It's a, it's a very long. It's a very long cigar. A um, couple of wrappers to keep it together. And like M&M from 8 Mile? Uh, yes. And they also give you a couple of stilts in between to hold it for you. And you need at least a couple partners to smoke it because there's no way you're going to get a drag through that. Uh, gosh dang it. Seven by six inches. As seven by six inches? Seven. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. <laughs> 70 by six inches. So 70 ring gauge. We've showing out a lot of sizes for you guys. 70 by six, 60 by 70, you know, uh, 73 all. by orange. God damn, you're, making me cuss. Hey, hey. you're making me cuss on the show. Can you? Can you? Um, the Mandula Oblongata, yeah, they, they look a little different because they have that thicker size with the shorter uh, stick. Now, the Mandula and the Oblongata is two separate cigars, yes? Yes. Okay. Comes in the same box, Yeah. Um, but they're two different cigars. And I believe you can buy them uh, in a four-pack with those, the Ogre, and uh, something else. Asylum? Uh, maybe the Asylum? Yeah, I think, yeah, the Asylum. Uh, for those guys who want a giant friggin' four pack, like, yeah, a seven ring gauge would be a toothpick. So I don't think there's a lot of people making a seven ring gauge. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, everybody, everyone's doing yeah. it. They just don't tell you. I hate you. I hate you so much. Anyway, this cigar is great. It, it is. I mean, if you guys have not yet had a chance to try out a Viva La Vida, 
you guys are really, really missing out on a very unique smoking experience. Again, these guys have over 25 years uh, in the industry, and they may not be a name that's known to you, um, but they had a lounge out in New York that they ended up selling to Casa de Monte Cristo. And uh, when they got done with that, uh, they decided, hey, I want to uh, start a cigar um, manufacturing thing, and they met up with Eddie Fernandez. So, Yeah, if it wasn't for the cigar, I don't think I could handle Frankie right now. It's too much. But this has been a wonderful. Um, I really do like Casa de Monte Cristo. Don't get me wrong. But there are so many cool lounges that are self-sufficient, you know, sufficient, not really attached to a big brand. Um, do you prefer that? Or do you, do you like that franchise feel that you could have the same experience here in California as you would there in Texas? Now, the one Casa Monte Cristo lounge I, you know I love and I fanboy over time is the one in Vegas. Every time I go to Vegas... That's my first stop. I go there, 100%. I get a cigar, no matter what cigar it is, and I also grab uh, an old-fashioned. Uh, it's pricey because it's on the strip, but it's something I do every time we go there. Other than that, I like going to the smaller shops. I like going to the, you know, the Scallywags, the Cigars and More, um, the Cigar Factory Outlet. Um, yeah, shout out to the boardroom, too. Yeah, you know, I, I like those. They, they feel more like home to me. Uh, even Ambassadors, which is, uh, uh, to me, a higher-end cigar lounge. Very fancy. Um, I like those, you know, I, I don't really want to go to Cigar Internationals to go have a cigar or the other Casa de Monte Cristo like we went to in Texas. Um, I like the individual uh, experience? experience that you get from the other ones. Yeah. I agree with that. I really did like the, um, the, the boardrooms that you could rent the meeting rooms over at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo in Texas though. Yeah, that was cool. It's, it's a nice extra addition to your lounge. Uh, especially when you have those high end areas for uh, renting for your, uh, well, not renting, excuse me, your membership. If it's a high end dues, you want to make sure you, you get your money's worth. And you definitely do at those places. Yeah. Nothing wrong with them. But I do appreciate the unique experience you get from one to the other. Like the art house in uh, in uh, Texas that we went to, that was really cool, had its own feel to it versus um, not really a lounge, I guess, but it's still technically one. I like over how the soda's in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, and you get, they had ice by the machine, you pour it in the glass, water by the um, glass bottle. It was cool. Um, but versus, uh, dang it, what is it called? The I think that's a Texas Boyo, thing, though. Boyo No Braza, uh, how they had the lounge built into the restaurant. Yeah, but I think that the water on the table in the glass bottle, that's a Texas thing. Because they had that everywhere. Yeah, it seemed like it. Yeah, I think Jeff, you're right. Jeff, how you doing? Um, but yeah, they had it when we went to go get lunch at that that cheese shop uh they had it at the, the the lounge over there i think that's just a texas thing because the heat and humidity over there so you use water and glass yeah how does that defeat humidity no, no no i'm just saying they had the glass bottle of water and you said it was a unique to them but i saw it everywhere we went no it was a restaurant a lounge because of the humidity that's weird i don't think that's it at all i think you're right. wrong okay yeah Right. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it? it? Doesn't feel good when people do that to you. Well, I was making a valid point. I don't think you were not yelling out crazy size of cigars. Guys, I'm making a hundred by twelve inch um, cigar. It's called the I don't care what you want to smoke, but you're gonna smoke this now. It's a very long name, but it's a big cigar, so you can fit the whole thing on the van. Uh, this Viva La Vida is smoking amazingly well. Uh, I'm loving the flavors. Uh, Matt, how you doing? Yeah, my burn line is unbelievably straight. I already tapped it just because I've been ashing myself like all day. Um, with one cigar, I dropped. I don't know how many times on myself. That's because you can't see it. Because of my glasses, yes. Um, but I just, I made it into the ashtray. It's in there right now. Um, burning very well. Smoke output's nice. Easy draw. Not too loose, but easy still. And um, fantastic yeah. construction. I mean, this outer leaf, you guys, is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you guys have a chance to get your hands on some, absolutely get your hands on some. Uh, if you can't. Get a hold of Redbeard Cigar Company in Arizona. I know that they carry them. Yes. Um, I think they're the only people I know that actually carry them. They're, they're, it's a very hard cigar to find. You know, I, I see that right now it is. It definitely is difficult. Um, sometimes you got to get those diamonds. You got to go look for them. But if uh, they do start shipping out, like I hope they do, I can see it being everywhere and doing well in a very, a very wide group of people. And make sure you tune in on Saturday because one of these might be in a prize. What? Not more than that, though, because I only have a few. And I'm selfish. With we'll these. give away everything Frankie's got, guys. Whatever you want. You want his uh, limited edition um, God of Fire? Give that away. You guys want his uh, um, Sasquatch uh, travel case? Give that away too. It's got Alexis Texas. 
his logo on or initial? Or, or she put a broad wrote on the message to me. She wrote a and message. She signed it, and it'll go to you now because uh, Frankie wants to do that, huh? Wants to give that away. Okay, and Barrio and Phoenix has them also. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, of options in uh, Arizona. There we go. Thank you, commenters. Appreciate that. Yeah. It was all in, it was all in the chat right now. Uh, we've got Mitch. We've got uh, Tim, Jeff, and, uh, Matt, um, Rob. Hey, Rob. And Jasmine. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, Alexis Texas. If you guys didn't know, she was on a show um, a while back. Uh, two months, three months ago. A few, it was a few months ago. Uh, I didn't know she was a big cigar smoker, but she smokes cigars. She smokes uh, mostly Cubans. Yep. Um, but uh, sitting there with her and watching her smoke a cigar was probably one of the best things I've ever seen. It was a, it was a fun time. You could not handle yourself. You were very much nervous. Very nervous. You could tell on the stream. In fact, people commented. Frankie looks nervous. And it was uh, because he was. Definitely because he was. You know what she does for a living. And? I know. But even though she does that for a living, she's still absolutely gorgeous. She, she kind of has to be, though. Yeah. Doesn't? Like, that goes hand in hand. Well, no. You never. You, you, people have some weird fetishes. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, she's know. an absolute delight. She's super pretty in person. Super fun to talk to. Uh, just an amazing girl. Very much so. Very cool. Very laid back, actually. She was... Yeah. Uh, yeah, don't meet your heroes, but I don't know if she was a hero of mine. I don't know about that. Um, I don't want to follow in her footsteps. I don't think I could make a, a career out of that. But uh, the fact that we got to meet her being such a face to her industry. And honestly, she yeah, a lot of people know her name. They know who she is. Mm -hmm. um, she works hard for what she does. And the fact that she was so cool to talk to and very open about you know her love of cigars as well. You hear a lot of closeted smokers out there because tobacco just gets a bad rap all the time. No matter what you're uh, trying to do. I'm sorry, my smoke keeps going right in your face. Not your fault. It's a, it's a ventilation, which is a good thing to have. And it's AC being over at Calebra's Lounge right now. I don't know if we mentioned that when we started. Yeah. But uh, I could not do this show if we didn't have AC. No. There was, I, would, I would be like, sorry, guys. We're only doing Bakersfield Gentlemen for our six to seven months out of the year. Yeah. Uh, the other five are dead to us because it's way too hot in Bakersfield. There's no gentlemen in the summer here in Bakersfield. No, unless not. you got AC. Few more notes that I have here. September sixth is uh, Cigars and More's two grand opening uh, here in Bakersfield, California. That's the corner of Brimhall and Allen. It's going to be hosted by Drew Estates. So hopefully, uh, Kara will bring some cool stuff out when she gets out here. I would like to see that Cuba art day out here. Yes, we talked about that on the Saturday show, but I think it merits a follow up. Um, always a fun time when Kara comes by. Oh, yeah. She does a great job. Great events. Um, Drew Estate has a bunch of different cigars that I very much love. Uh, the Liga 9 is great. I love the T-52 a little bit more, but uh, I would never turn down the number 9. No. They're awesome. Uh, September 7th, the following day, Vintage Havana Lounge is having their one-year anniversary over in Ridgecrest, California, so a couple hours drive from here. And that will actually be uh, hosted by Ventura Cigars. Nice. So we'll have plenty of the new Chapter 3 archetype line, the Secret Scales, Dawn of Destiny. Yeah. And the new Nicaraguan Psycho 7. Psycho 7. That's a great cigar. The Nicaragua here is amazing. I did not have one. It is really good. I think we might have one left somewhere. I do. I'm, I'm going to smoke that so I can also try it. No, we actually made a deal because you smoked the Big Poppy and we only had one. I got that one. Fair enough. But you already had one. I know. So I should get that one. No. Yeah. This is, this is some... I'm getting, I'm getting big leagues here. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, you're getting Big Poppy. You know what? Fair enough. It was a great cigar. Now we will, like I said earlier, we will be coming out with our top ten from IPCPR. Yep. Um, even though they did not have a booth there, they were there, so I'm going to include them in the list. I don't think I can. That's the first time I had it there, and I'm not going to include it just because I want to focus on people who were there, you know, who gave us gave us the time of day during their sales. Um, Viva La Vida is wonderful and doesn't need to be on the list to be wonderful. It is phenomenal on its own. And uh, I, th I think I'll let you hold on to that one then. I will. I, I know we'll have a couple I'll of hold on to it. Matter of fact, I'll take care of the rest of the box too. Oh, you want to finish mine right now? Yeah, I'll finish it too. Sure, thanks. No, I, I know we're going to have a couple overlapping, but I want to do our best to at least have some unique to each other so everyone has a good variety of what was there. Because there was a lot to go through. And 10, at most, it could be 20 uh, cigars if we both came up with completely different lists. Yeah. That probably doesn't even uh, do the entire event justice. No, there's so many good uh, options to come out of uh, IPCPR this year. 
Next Friday, there will be a 1502 event at Robusto Cigars in Arcadia. Nice. Very nice. I don't want to go to Arcadia. I just have a. I'm only going to have a chance to go. No. Um, next week, we actually have. That's the sixth. Yeah, we have stuff yeah. planned. Yeah, we have uh, our grand opening. We have our one year anniversary. And then soccer season. Yeah, I wish we didn't for that. I wish we could go over to, to Vegas and go check out the uh, smoking on the mo- uh, smoking on the rooftop rooftop smoking on the rooftop of the M Hotel, right? Yes. Yeah, the boardroom's gonna throw on an awesome party over there. God, I really wish we could have made that. Yeah, it would have been too. a great three day weekend of just nothing but cigar event after cigar event. But I know they're gonna have a great time without us. Um, so I just hope they have the best time they can. Uh, what did you think of the big popping? I'm not a big ring gauge fan like that. It was very big. That was a 60 inch or six, gosh dang it. Now you got me stuck on that. 60 ring gauge. 60 ring gauge by 60 inch? 60 ring gauge. Very large cigar. But the flavors are still nice. It's very smooth all the way through. Easy draw for being so big. There's a long burn time. Got a lot of cigar out there. I know there's some guys who can kind of house their way through those really quickly. Mm-hmm. Just not me. Can't do it. Um, and I think it's meant to be enjoyed over a long period of time. You know, you relax with it uh, like you would any cigar. But if you got an hour and 40 to about two hours to kill, it's a cigar for you. The cigar just keeps getting better and better. Oh, yeah. They're always good. Never had a Viva La Vida I didn't like. And uh, I've, I'm trying to catch up with you. You've got more than me. But I'm going to I'm gonna catch you. Are you? Because they are great. Okay. Okay. Um, some other big news we got coming up for another event. September 26th, which is a Thursday, yep. uh, we're going to be having an in-house event at Cigars & More 2. Uh, it's going to start off our brand new cigar club, and it's going to feature uh, cigars and football. Uh, and it will be hosted by Esteban Cuerras, and they'll be unveiling uh, the near- new shipment to us of The Unforgiven, yes. uh, which is their richest, most full-bodied cigar that they made to date. Uh, it's one they unveiled at the show. And it is phenomenal. That's actually the cigar we sat down today and had with Jimmy. Uh, I noticed he didn't have one. Uh, he had some a lot lighter. He had the Opa uh, Bloodline um, Connecticut. Yes, which is also good. It's yeah. a great cigar. But he gave us the Unforgiven, which is a powerhouse of a cigar. Uh, it is, mm-hmm. I would say, maybe two steps below a Jacob Slider Brimstone, but it's still way up down the strength level. Very strong still. Very delicious. Um, I think um, rich is a great word to describe it. Rich in flavor, rich in strength, uh, complexity. It's just a rich cigar all over. Um, I would both mention before, that would definitely go on uh, my list for top 10 uh, standouts. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this event. I know uh, we're a little late to the game getting into the shops because it's starting to get out there. But uh, I'm very happy to see it go into cigars more. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and the thing of it is, is that, it's hard to bring in all these new cigars at one time into California. It's got to be. There's a lot of companies that won't deal with California because of the de-license situation, uh, the taxing situation. Uh, so we, we generally get them a little bit behind everybody else. But we still get yeah. them in. Can't wait to have another one of those. Can't wait for the 26th for that event. Uh, Jimmy is always so much fun to hang out with. You know, he knows his stuff. He talks a mile a minute. Nothing but energy. Uh, yeah, Nothing but all, energy. all energy with that guy. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I know he's busy too, but others. So I was gonna ask him to. Uh, oh gosh, dang it! Come on, there we go. Almost dropped my cigar. You did drop your cigar. No, it's not on the floor like somebody did. Would it count if you throw it on the floor like that? Has anyone done that before? No, I don't think so ever. I, I don't know. I think uh, if you watch a, a quick live stream we did at like 3 a.m., someone threw a cigar. Just no, I don't want to on the ground. Yes, that's how it happened. Yep. Anyway. Um, I would love to get him on the podcast sometime. Yeah. Just uh, have him talk. We don't have to go just uh, his brand or ask him to say anything specific or, oh, it's new and coming up. He doesn't give us any insider tips. He just, him talking, he gives a lot of information about a lot of different topics very quickly. And he just, like you said, wealth of knowledge and nothing but energy. Oh, thank you, Matt. Because he loves the extra shows, likes the extra content. Thank you. Appreciate that. And it's a lot of fun to do this. I mean, getting to sit around, smoke a cigar, talk about it, talk cigar business talk alcohol, talk our interests, and for you guys to sit there and, and, and join us and um, and be entertained by what we're doing, it does mean a lot. Uh, Tim, you take it easy. Got to go home from work. Oh, have a good one. It's a safe trip home. 
But uh, not only that, though, I like doing this because then we get the feedback of what other people are enjoying. Not just cigars, but uh, different, yeah, like you said, different alcohols, different spirits, um, craft beers. Uh, what's everyone eating with this stuff? Different uh, recipes, people enjoying different barbecues across this country. Because what we enjoy over here, you know, got our tri-tip going on. Completely different from what's going on, on the East Coast. You know, got the, the brisket tri-tip war. Which everyone wants to go, oh, brisket's a better cut. You know, I don't care. I don't care how everyone looks down on my tri-tip. It's delicious. Yeah, I'd like to know in the comments. We do have a couple people watching right now live. Let us know if you prefer brisket or tri-tip. Um, I know this won't make it on the podcast for people to answer back, but... You can message it. You I can would put, still like to know. You can put it in comments on uh, SoundCloud. iTunes That's is not right. as, as That's right. We easy. need to get comments on there. So, uh, just real quick, I'd just like to know. Yeah, comment uh, that. Jeff says tri-tip. Tri-tip is a winner. It's, yeah. it's delicious. You can have a fatty cut. You can cut all that fat away. Have a nice lean piece of meat. Um... Makes great sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Goes good in my my burritos, which is you know still more uh, West Coast thing I think. But you know what? A lot of great things are West Coast things. So sorry, East Coast. Matt also says try tip. Very good, very good. Nice. See, we got some smart people here. Uh, this Saturday we'll be doing our end of the month show. It's actually the last day of the month. Very last, yeah. So you guys aren't going to want to miss that. 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we'll be doing our. Uh, I don't want to say the G word. We can say it here. But, uh, oh, we can. We can say yeah, giveaway. Who cares? Yeah. Giveaway. Doing giveaways. Take so, that, Facebook. Uh, we'll be having our giveaways. Uh, I'll be posting pictures uh, Friday um, uh, uh, of the stuff on Instagram. So you guys can check it out. I'm doing the exact same way. I'm going to put the number on the sticker. I hope we have enough stickers left. Uh, we're running low. Oh, yeah. And oh, uh, no. uh, you win whatever uh, prize corresponds to that question. And you know what? Uh, we're not giving away cigars. I'm giving away personalized leaf collections. They just happen to be tobacco leaves. They just happen to have bands on them from certain companies. And you can do whatever you want with them. That's I mean, right. You know, save them, put them in some kind of special case for a certain day. Uh, smoke them if you want. You know, it's whatever you want to do with them. And then sometimes, hopefully in the future, we'll be giving away, you know, very fancy bottles that happen to have certain kinds of liquid in them that may or may not be alcoholic. You know, stuff like that. Getting messages right now from uh, Billy, one of the owners of uh, Viva La Vida. Right They're now. At an event right now. So he's sending me pictures of their event. Oh, nice. That's cool. Nice. Yeah, they, they are nonstop with that. They had a big one. Yeah. Um, New York. Just last weekend? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think that's part of the reason you said you wanted to wait on our on our live show with them. Yeah. Um, because you wanted them to be able to see it, right? Yes. And they had, it wasn't just, it was like two days, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was a big event. I got a, what was the name of it? It was a Viva La Vida event. Really? Yeah. It was a two-day view. That's crazy. Okay. I I'm going to believe you. I don't know. You lying to me? No, there are different lounges, I think. Okay, so I had just a busy weekend. Yeah. of. Okay, that's cool. You know, it's, I, I don't know personally. I know the Luxury Cigar Club and Viva La Vida put it on together. Uh, I was not invited, uh, so that was rude. How are you going to get over there? Huh? Well, I asked who was going to pay for my ticket over there, and nobody answered. So. No, like, nope. Yeah. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just – it's such uh, – a good industry to be a part of. You see how hard people work, uh, events, talking to their customers, just like like we did today with Jimmy, talking to different store owners, talking to uh, customers there, you know, trying to get the word out any way they can on the road, freaking five six days a week, just making five stops a day. It's uh, uh, it's a lot of work that goes into that, and yeah. it's uh, something to appreciate. Appreciate your local reps, guys. And going back to Saturday's giveaway, we'll have more than just cigars, you guys. We'll have uh, probably a cutter or two. Um, I saw ashtray on there. We might have a couple ashtrays still left. Um, we do have another Viva La Vida ashtray, but you guys aren't getting that. Uh, one is at the lounge, uh, which is the one we're actually using right now behind the uh, the, the camera here or behind the, the box. Yep. And the other sits on my desk, so you guys can't have that. I can uh, grab fine. it. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in uh, the giveaway real quick. But we do have a couple of ashtrays. I think we have like a single ashtray, and we have a, a couple of other bigger ceramic ashtrays. So um, I'll take a look at what we have, and uh, we'll make this a good one. Um, Next month is our two-year anniversary. Yeah. Next month. I think so. Yeah, I think so, September. So next month's going to be a great giveaway at the end of the month, you guys. You guys aren't going to want to miss uh, September. Um, I'm going to be asking companies, hey, we're going on two years. Give me some stuff of yours to give away. Give me it. Yeah. You got that? Give you got me. that? Give it. You're over there yeah. having it. I'm over here wanting it. It's basic economics. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it's going to be a good month. I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, for sticking with us for so long, for two years, it's, it's a long journey. 
um, and I can't wait to get it going further. Yes, um, yes. Uh, we still need help raising the numbers on YouTube. Um, we're at uh, 383. We want to get it to at least 1,000 uh, so we can go live from the phone. Yep. Because you can't go live from mobile device until you reach that 1,000 mark. So uh, It's fine. It's fine. We're getting there. You guys help us out and uh, keep spreading the word. Keep sharing with your friends and other cigar lovers and other cigar groups. And get us at that 1,000 mark, you guys. That's, that's the good and bad about Facebook. We can reach people more there. But they're cracking down on us. Cracking down on you guys, too. They don't want you to get prizes. They don't want you to be able to trade. You can't sell if you have like a bundle. Like, oh, hey, I bought a pack of whatever, and I can give away five of them. Can't do that. It's just rough. Uh, can't wait, guys. Uh, this year, so I haven't been following you guys too long. You're a cool, I mean, you know, personal. Hey, brother, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you know, thank you. Uh, a lot of people go, oh my God, how long have you guys been smoking cigars? Um, two years? It's been about three. As, or, or that's right. The yeah. show's been going on for two, two years. but we've been smoking about three. So yeah. we're, we're still relatively new to the cigar world. You know, people will talk to us about cigars from a couple years ago, and we're like, um, I've never smoked that, bro. Yeah, which is kind of nice because we get to try things for the first time um, live with you guys sometimes, which is really nice to be able to do. Something that uh, has been a staple for others uh, can be re brought up. Uh, yeah. when we do it and it's also nice that the fact that new companies all the time that we could bring to you guys hopefully like viva la vida or like uh when uh, we talk about sinistro i love being able to talk about um the honor among thieves and like hey guys this is coming you guys are gonna love it yep. definitely try it out or um like the unforgiven love that cigar and it's uh, it's working its way out there it's not completely yep. everywhere yet so it's nice to be able to uh to spread the word and about the people of vida you know, uh, I know people are having a hard time getting it. Uh, it's hard to find. Uh, but again, we're hoping to get it into cigars and more. Uh, and I know once people start smoking it, it's going to make their way into their regular rotation. It's just oh, yeah. that good of a cigar. I agree. Uh, oh, well, there we go. Billy's on right now. Billy, how you doing? Hey. Talking about your cigar right now. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, once we showed people the ashtrays, Billy, uh, they wanted us to give one away. And I said, no, I'm going to be selfish with the ashtrays. Every once in a while, we'll get some stuff from some people, and uh, that I keep for myself. And this is one of those things. Maybe for the two-year, I can ask uh, Trina over at Cigars and More to give a couple shirts away. We have uh, – or they have a new logo or a new uh, bigger logo T-shirt, and uh, we're wearing them ours right now. Very comfortable. Good yeah. stuff. It's just another way to kind of show support. If you guys want to get one um, and you don't want to wait for any giveaway, they're 20 bucks. Good shirts. I like them a lot. Yeah, but speaking of the giveaway, would you guys want prints of the models that we worked with with the cigar stuff? Um, obviously, we'll have them sign them, maybe give a little note or something. Uh, but let us know if you guys want uh, prints as prizes as well. Yeah. Uh, of course, we could do yeah. um, different shirts that we get. We've done that before. Yep. Um, only because when we give away shirts, it's kind of hard matching sizes because the shirt we have is the size we get. So sometimes we'll get a medium, sometimes we'll get a large. Oh, yeah. And it's either you give it to your girlfriend or your wife or your kid because it ain't going to fit us. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. I can't wear a medium too well. I could try, but you guys are going to like what you see. It's going to be very uh, yeah, difficult. Billy, I know you're busy, man. I do appreciate you checking in. Uh, we just want to let you know that we're going live, uh, talking about all the great stuff uh, that you guys do. Um, absolutely love Evil Vida Cigars. It, is, it has been one of those cigars this year that has blown me away Yeah, uh, and has become easily one of my top five cigars. It, yeah, it definitely. It should be in that ranking. Yeah. It's wonderful. Th th this year alone uh this will be the third year we've done a top five and it is going to be one of the hardest years i've ever done uh with such amazing cigars like this coming out yeah no, i agree with that 100 percent. and uh, hopefully billy if we can get you on the live show sometime uh on a saturday night maybe uh we'll stream you in um because that yeah, would be they, a great they, show they need to do a, a an east or east, a west coast tour we we'll love that yeah that would be awesome, awesome. That would be so cool. Incredible. Yeah, sodom off at San Diego, work up to, to Orange County in LA, uh, come out to Kern County, hit up Napa, uh, Sacramento, even Fresno. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that would be so cool. That's a good idea. I like it. Uh, not even halfway done, and we're already at five, 45 minutes. So, um, a long, a nice it, it's long a burn. Great time. long smoke time on this one. Uh, easily, I want to say two hours out of the Toro size here. And again, I can't say enough amazing things about the wrapper leaf sometimes you just find a wrapper that's just beautiful uh for me it's always been the standard the oliva servia milanio um the sumatra wrapper that they use on that Very it's good, always yeah. been a standard but i mean this thing is just beautiful and oily and 
Oh man, it's just you know when you find a good rapper, you know. Hundred percent, definitely agree with that. Um, so besides our notes that we've gone over so far, um, we did not pick out our cigar for our Stogie fight. I did. This is mine, right? That's not fair. What? Yeah. So you I win. You tricked me. I win. I got duped. You did. Got bamboozled. Got. I don't know any other words for it. Billy, totally understand. You take care. God bless. We love you. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be in touch so we can get that California tour. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But uh, I guess yeah, Frankie wins this or this week. That was that was a dirty pool. But at the same time, I'm really enjoying it. So I uh, can't argue. You know, there are, I would say, a handful of cigars that the moment I've lit them up and tried them, I've fallen in love with them. And this is easily one of those. Obviously, my Leo Serie V is one. Yep. Um, the Partagas uh, Legend was oh, another one. Yeah. Um, I, I Again, I wasn't a huge Partagas fan, but the moment I, I lit that one up and tried it, I was like, wow. It's good. Um, it was really good. Jacob's Ladder Brimstone is another one. Ooh, um, yeah. So you, you know when you find that cigar, uh, the Atabe, Ooh. it's just it's just a phenomenal feeling when you find that cigar that you love. And I'm, I've am i been handing out some of these to the guys to, to give them a try so they can see what I'm talking about. And I got to slow down because then I'm not going to have any left for me. Do you have another box? Shh. Dang, dude. That's right. Frankie's giving away two more whole boxes of Viva Levitas. Any ones that he gets from now on, no longer smoking them, just giving them away. Because he knows how good they if are. I could. I'd be handing these out all day. Oh yeah, like candy. Yeah, like I, I guess yeah. Get a get a windowless white van. Just hand them to random cigar smokers, mm -hmm. and you'd get in that van. Yes, you would. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you uh, have a couple more notes here. Okay. Uh, cigar porn. If you guys are in the market for some uh, cool shirts or a cool new backpack or hat, uh, they're giving us a, they've given us a discount code. I'll use the code Baker Show that checkout to get a nice discount on your guys' purchases. Uh, so don't forget to check them out. Check them out on Instagram. Um, it's really cool what they're doing. Not only do they have the main cigar porn uh, Instagram, but all their different regions have their own. So Atlanta has one, Houston has one, yeah. Dallas has one, LA is the newest one to join the fold. I like that. Yeah. Um, so they all have their own little uh, their own little niche area. So um, you can follow one or all of them. And anytime you use uh, the checkout code Bakersfield, you guys will get a nice little discount on your stuff. Yeah, it's like ten percent discount. I like that. Hope it helps out. Um, I'm liking some of the new designs I'm seeing. I'm still really partial to that. Uh, it just says cigar porn with the American flag, um, kind of logo basically. Mm -hmm. And man, that's just that's one of the cool shirts. Yeah, I love it. That. Really, really is. They made a tie dye one. Oh yeah, the tie dye one. That's cool too. Yeah, uh, Perdomo has announced factory tours for 2020. Um, the first tour is Group 1A. It leaves January 25th and returns January 29th. And the last tour is Group 5A, and that leaves February 22nd and returns February 26th. So nice. uh, they have a bunch of other dates in between there. Uh, those are just the main – or the first group and the last group. They also have uh, Group 1B, 2B, 3B, and all those. Um, but those were the, uh, the first and last dates to go on that. So if you guys want to do a Perdomo factory tour – uh, make sure you guys get on those dates, check out the prices, make sure it's within your budget, and uh, have fun. Yeah, yeah. Get those passports renewed right now, guys, so you can make sure you can go. Get your real ID. Do you need that for that? I don't know. Uh, You're going to need a real ID for everything, apparently. Uh, yeah. In or, between the states, that makes no sense to me, needing another form of ID to go from California to Texas, which is what we're going to have to do. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. You can't stop it sometimes. You just got to go with it. And uh, from what I understand here in California, they screwed up the first time they did the run through mm -hmm. and they asked people, no, we need something else to have to come back and give us more information. Well, then how do they have a real ID then? How is do they have a fake one now? Does it's that cool, though, because when I get my real ID, I'm also my little veteran sticker on there. Yeah. But does that make the ID you have right now a fake ID? Yes. Is your is your birth certificate not real? No. The social security, just like a number, just a random one now? Well, I was told that my social security number was going to be uh suspended and all of my benefits were going to be halted and i was like wow i don't use any social security benefits and i didn't know you could suspend them uh and this nice man uh named mike miller uh with a thick indian accent uh told me that if i don't pay him in target gift cards i could also be arrested oh no so we gotta get some target gift cards guys yes if anyone out there has any hookups on that let us know and i can't have frankie being in jail for his social security problems See, now, I'm not saying October 2020 is going to be the cutoff uh, for the real IDs, 
Um, I was actually told it's this October. I yeah, I was no, I was told I was told it was just 2020. No, I was told it was October 2019. Yeah. Ugh. So I, I don't understand it. I'm gonna double check with the DMV because we're obviously gonna need them soon. Well, uh, a big thing that is happening this October, the 27th and 28th, they're having um, a kind of a town meeting or town hall meeting for the FDA to kind of finally lay out their plan of what they're expecting from tobacco re or from tobacco manufacturers. Excuse yeah. Me, um, as far as their testing goes. And that not just includes cigars, but that's also uh, e-cigarettes, um, water-based pipes, which is not tobacco. I don't know anyone who does that. You won't be able to blow your chunky vape clouds. I guess not. Not not as long as as long as they're they're cotton candy flavor, so you can't. We'll be exempt. No, I'm just kidding. So it is 2020. October 2020. Okay. Um, well, gives us a little more time, but still, still hop on it now. It's just a problem to get out yeah, of the just way. Get it out of the way. Get it done. Well, let's see here. But what I'm um, back to uh, sorry, back oh, to yeah. um, yeah, they're having their town hall meeting for uh, the FDA that will be on the uh, the East Coast, excuse me. So it will be different times than we're used to. As soon as we, I find out exactly when, we'll go over that some more. Uh, we talked about it a little on Tuesday, but it's coming up a lot faster now. Everyone's been saying, oh, we got years to wait for regulation to pass through, which is still true. But the sooner they let us know exactly what they're thinking, it can either be a kind of a yay or nay for the cigar community because maybe it's not as bad as we're thinking and it's not going to go into effect that day no they're just getting everybody no. the blueprints on what they're going to want exactly and then start working on a date when it'll take effect you can't do it oh now you know they have to give the companies time to meet those requirements and, and fulfill those things that they want done and this yeah this is just saying what they're expecting yeah uh to be the ruling so far just some actual specifics not just we'll be testing which has been kind of What's been irking a lot of people? Just like, what does that mean? What are you testing exactly? Well, they're testing math competency skills, um, basic common English grammar skills. Okay, you can't um, judge geography a, skills. You can't judge a fish how it climbs a tree. Okay, Einstein told me that. So obviously, there's some science behind it. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying, if they can give us some more specifics on what they're actually expecting, it might ease some tensions. It might, you know, alleviate some people's minds. Like, what's going on with my cigars? What's what can I expect to either have to cut back on as far as is, is, it, is it the sizes? Is it um, all the blends? Is, are we going to have to close up shop for some companies? No, I have a question for you. Because the individual tobacco tax is different in every state, yeah. and that is according to the state's GDPs, um, would you rather see a flat tax on tobacco? And do you think that would be fair to smaller states that maybe don't have as much money like California? California on its own is top 10 economies. Yeah, that's in the world. Yes, if it was its own country, it would be top ten economy. We used to be number four. Used to be number four. Yeah, yeah. Um, for world. I, I think we're seven right now. Still very high. Yeah, very very high. Um, so obviously they think, oh, we could tax California more because there's more money. Yeah. But if let's say they said, okay, we're going to do a flat tax, it's going to be ten percent, which would be great for California because it would drop from sixty five to ten. But would it be fair to other states who have maybe a two or five percent tax and for them to double or um you know anything like that what, what's your thought i don't like federal taxing systems anyway i don't uh, states rights that you're infringing on there and that's where our whole constitution is based off of your area needs to govern its area because you know what's better for your particular group of people your community better than um the the central government telling everybody what to do there is an idea called the fair tax, which would take all businesses, people, individuals to a 20% tax. Now, it sounds high, but that would cut off any problems that you have for making more money, making less money, no loopholes that you have to worry about. Um, everything would fall under that. So the way they figured it is that the government won't lose any money they need to make. You won't have to worry about ridiculous fees as far as, let's say you're not as savvy with tax law as the next guy or bird law or bird law for that matter get a, get a hold of that watch always sunny but uh if you are not taking advantage of all the tax credits that you can get you would no longer have to worry about that problem so the government um would no longer worry about people taking too much advantage of loopholes and you wouldn't have to worry about um having to know every single thing that's going on because you know exactly what you're being taxed mm -hmm. and i think that would save a lot of problems uh, i think it's still kind of high tax people like that but it would also create a lot of jobs because that money that they're not putting directly back into the government um as far as 
a business that has 50,000 people right now, or I know it's an astronomical number, yeah, right. but someone who employs that many people will pay the exact same, someone paying 5,000. So both companies would have the opportunity to create more um, for less because they're keeping stuff under their umbrella. So at the same time, you create more jobs, which gets taxed as well. You know, their income tax, which is terrible, uh, sales tax, everyone's still paying taxes, but the money is in more people's hands. Right. Now, does the fair tax also include the Ferris wheel? No. It includes Ferris Bueller and uh, Tim Ferris, who is uh, really smart as well. If you don't know his books, 4-Hour Workweek is awesome. I hear you talk about that book a lot. It is a good book. It's a great book. Uh, back to this Viva La Vida. Yeah. Still smoking incredibly well. It's got this nice oily coating on my mouth Yeah. Uh, that it's leaving, uh, including the coffee, the wood, slight spice is still there, that nuttiness is still there, earthiness. It's coming through really nice, and uh, it's still smoking incredibly well. Straight burn line, my ash falling off in solid chunks. Uh, great draw. Fan, just a fantastic cigar. Ooh, nice, yeah. Jim, could, how you doing? I can set it down for a moment, too, and not worry about going out. I mean, I'm a very big fan of that. I don't like things um, that I have to babysit. I don't want to babysit my cigar. I don't want to right. keep relighting it. I don't want to keep retouching it. I don't want to worry about, oh, it's burning too much to one side. When I can actually relax with the cigar and uh, not worry about upkeep, that's a big plus for me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. Now, there are there are some that will give you problems and you just kind of deal with them. Bloodline. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking of right now. And you kind of just deal with it because it's so good. But the more I can avoid that, the happier I am. But it's each their own. If you don't mind you know, retouching or you don't mind relighting, that's not a problem either. Uh, real quick, Jim, just to recap. Uh, I believe you can find these both at Embargo uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and you can also find them at uh, Redbeard Cigar Company, which is in northern Arizona, I believe. Yep. Um, so you can get a hold of either one of those guys on the internet and uh, get some cigars for them, or you can watch Saturday's show and try to win one. There you go. That's a good way to do it. Hey, nothing tastes better than a one cigar. Right. Uh, I, uh, I definitely can uh, attest to that. Um, now... We were talking about IPCPR earlier, mm -hmm. IPCPR earlier. Now the PCA. Now the PCA. And uh, everyone is pretty relieved for the uh, cigar day to be gone. Yes. Um, in fact, we we're talking about Jimmy. I absolutely love that. I didn't realize, which makes perfect sense, the first day is our number one day in selling. Not to cut you off, I honestly think that with them, if they would have gone through with it, there was a, a rule in there that I was reading that – Everybody that was going to be having a booth had to be open for the consumer day. Um, so you couldn't be like, oh, well, we're a small company. We're just not going to be open that day. So I think they would have actually lost more money than they would have made from the tickets by the smaller companies not going at all. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. And you would have been, you would have had, very, you would have had some very upset uh, consumer day goers because of how many companies wouldn't have shown up. Yeah, because not only are they going there for the big companies, but they're going there for the boutique stuff. Yeah, They're going there to try the brand new boutique stuff that's coming out before their friends are. Uh, and if they weren't there, they'd be really upset. And uh, the thing is that the the manufacturers would have had to have brought in X amount of cigars, you know, a few thousand more cigars than they're used to bringing in. Mm. Well, they have to pay taxes on all those cigars. Yeah. They don't just get to bring them in because they're giving them away. No, no, They have to pay taxes on whatever they bring in. So let's say... Consumer Day was going to have 2,500 people, so they brought an extra 2,500 cigars, and they ended up giving away 1,500. That's an extra 1,000 cigars they had to pay for the taxes on that they did not use right then and there, mm -hmm. that they're just going to take back to the warehouse. It's rough. I mean, again, it's one of those situations that seemed like you just kind of have to deal with it and go along see what happens, but they listened, which was really great, and now, hopefully, either they replan it better for 2021 I think they're going to keep pushing it off. That's, I, I really don't see it coming to like 2025. I, I agree. That's what I was thinking too. They just push the date back a little bit more, really, really work it out, really try to crowdsource this information, see what you can do better, maybe even extend the show, I guess. I, I don't know. But there's there's more work that needs to be done. And it honestly should be on the last day of the show, not the first day. The well, first day should be for the, uh, the retailers to get in there, get their deals. It's the busiest sales day. For them to say, oh, we're going to close this first day just for consumers. No sales can be done. Um, 
would not be beneficial to anybody. I agree. I think it's very difficult to ask them to give up such an important day in the business, especially even when consumers know it's for business. It's for them to do work, for them to make their money so that the cigars keep making it to your shops. Um, and if you buy online, they're, they're buying there too. Everyone is doing work. And as much fun as it is to be able to smoke with your rep, um, when they're that busy, you kind of have to understand they've got other important things to do. Yes. And you're also taken away from the retailers because yes. they can't be taken care of um, by by the uh, the actual companies, by the different manufacturers. They have to take care of their um, people they bring in, which was a weird thing as well, uh, chaperone your yeah. customers. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of um, fine tuning that goes into it before we actually see it come down the uh, down the barrel. Yeah, a lot of fine tuning, which is fine. Which is a good thing. So about halfway done, and an hour in. I'm a little more than half. I'm about I'm out onto my last third, but it's smoking very nicely. A little yeah. a little flowering on my end, but I just tapped it kind of hard. I think that's more on me than the scar itself. Um, cannot stop saying enough great stuff about this flavor. I'm still getting that really nice woody uh, and toasted almond flavor. Mm -hmm. Coffee's still there, but it's in the back note more. No spice for me right now. Phenomenal, though. It's all coming together really well. I'm also getting a, um, a sweetness, like a molasses sweetness in there. We're on the top of my molasses. palate. Molasses. And, and I agree with, with, with Jim. You know, it, it's a retailer show. Yeah. That's what it is. The big smoke. Um, the factory tours, the, 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 the smaller events, Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain, those are for the consumers. Yeah. You know, that's what they're for. Um, this one was designed for the manufacturers that do direct business with the retailers once a year, show off their new stuff before it gets released so that they can have an idea of what they want to bring in. And taking away from that is just not that great. Crazy talk. Yeah. Ridiculous. You know, we will have to just bite the bullet. We have to plan a cigar con in Vegas. It'll be probably a couple of months before or after. I think we should do one right here in Bakersfield uh, in uh, mid-July. Have an outdoor event. I'm going to go with no on that. Um, Who doesn't want to smoke a nice cigar when it's 107 degrees outside? I don't. I definitely don't want to do that. No cover, no shade, hopefully. Nice, bright sunlight. Yeah, no. I don't want to sunburn and smoke. That does not sound like fun. That's um, what we call it, too, sunburn and smoke. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go said that needs some resource uh, some more research too uh, I think a lot of fans out there are gonna go hey let's not smoke in over 100 degree weather um, if you want to do that you better you better find one of those uh ice house kind of situations bad before cool. what's that bar in, in Vegas I don't uh, think it's called the ice house I think it's called the ice bar. It, it, the ice bar right yeah okay so yeah the ice bar where everything is at least 30 degrees and you know, I would love to have a cigar or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really awesome. Uh, you'd have some serious problems with smoke, I think, and yeah. ice. I don't know how that would go. But if anyone knows the logistics on that, let's get to work on yeah. that real fast. Uh, if you guys are in the market for some awesome cigar props, make sure you guys check out Cigar Prop on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, you can pick yourself up a, an awesome little stand like this one here. They also make them out of wood. And they also have uh, collapsible ones you take apart yes. and put in your wallet. Each one, each Kevin's side. Coming. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Kevin's coming out with some great stuff. Also got a nice uh, ring gauge sizer, um, and uh, it's beautifully manufactured stuff. Ring gauge sizer. Yeah, you can. It's a it's a little tool uh, with a bunch of holes in it. You put your cigar in, so you know exactly what ring size it is. Oh, okay, nice. Helps you with those uh, measurements when you want to take notes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, yeah, that uh, collapsible one is basically two metal um, credit card size um, pieces of uh, pieces of metal. Yeah, it is what it is, and it is perfect for when yeah you want to carry it around. Um, I almost lost it to uh, not TSA. I guess I guess TSA still aren't they? Even between states, um, just because they didn't know what it was. That's so what I was it. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, it's nope. It's no different than a credit card. Just metal. Give me a break. But I did also have a, a gift, a little gag gift from forever ago, which was a, a survival credit card, and it comes with. A couple of fishing lures, some little uh, uh, three prongs to make a, a little spear. It had a little spear on there, and it saw. had a small saw. And I didn't even think about it. I was like, "Man, I maybe I shouldn't bring this on a plane." That's on me. So, uh, 
Yeah, next time I'll uh, I'll leave that at home. I just threw it away that time. Like, no, yeah. this is not going through uh, security. I'm not going to deal with that. But uh, uh, going back to Cigar Prop, you guys, if you guys want to check them out, make sure you guys do. If you guys use the code Bakersfield on your checkout, you'll get 10% off of your purchase. Uh, so thanks to Cigar Prop for that. Yeah. And uh, last note I have here is September 1st, which is Sunday, our website goes live. Uh, so uh, give it as much traffic as you can, you guys. Let us know what you think of it. Uh, really, really want to try to do a good job with this website. So uh, right. check it out September 1st. We're writing up some articles, doing some pictures. Um, we're going to start a list of lounges that we like to visit. Uh, we'll have events on the calendar for those days and times we're going to be going live. Uh, so you guys can keep up to date with those as well. And it's just another avenue for you guys to keep up with us and to hang out with us and talk to us and, and for us to keep you guys posted on stuff that we're doing. So uh, really excited about it. Absolutely. Um, we've been we've been saying we're going to put a website together for a while, just like the podcast. And it's been slow going, but we're getting there, having everything we want to be doing being done on a regular basis. Like this is our sixth episode yep. of the podcast. Cannot wait to get to 100. I know it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a great feeling. Yeah, um, and make sure whatever you guys listen to it on, you guys like it and review it. Uh, that'll help us get higher up on the list. So people, when they type in cigars, they'll see us. Uh, you know, before Cigar Day, before Cigar Authority, you know, before Joe Rogan, you know, whoever. What well, for us versus Rogan as far as cigars go? I think I think we talk a little more about cigars than he does. Right, Joe Rogan stuff. No, love, don't don't second Joe Rogan. Come on the show. I love I love listening to Joe Rogan stuff. Um, they just had one about uh, illegal uh, marijuana grows throughout California, throughout the U.S., and as far as Silicon Valley, the East Coast, everywhere, and they estimate that there's 10,000 cartel members in California alone at those illegal grows. Oh, that was crazy. So you have a chance to listen to that one because yeah, it really insane. does uh, touch on those um, reasons why um, not just uh, the FDA but ATF, um, Border Patrol, everybody's getting involved. And things that are simple as a leaf because there's a market out there for it when you uh, push yep. it underground. So don't push things underground. Uh, the game warden guy was pretty cool. Andrew, how you doing? Thank you for checking in. Yes, I, I just listened to that one. I got to finish it up. It was a great episode, though, so far. Um, but that's going to do it for us, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty much a little over an hour. So uh, we're going to finish up and we're going to go do some more work, do some more editing, uh, some more pictures. Uh, we got some more stuff to write up for the website. Yep. Uh, going to gear up for the weekend and for Saturday's show. Uh, so thank you guys so much for sticking with us for this podcast. Uh, no matter where you listen to it, again, you guys, please uh, like it and review it. Uh, help us get the word out there. And other than that, any last words, Mike? No, just uh, be sure to check us out. Facebook are live Tuesdays at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Saturdays also on Facebook at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, go join the Facebook group, Cigars, Whiskey, and Beautiful Women. Uh, check out the YouTube channel, which you're on right now. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell so you know when these are coming out. Thank you so much for watching live, if you are watching live right now. Uh, a huge thank you to those helping push the podcast. Yeah. That's a huge help, too. We want to make sure we keep this going. And uh, if you want to hear or if you have a suggestion for guests, we're having more guests on very soon. Or cigars. Or cigars. Or any content for it. We can have a craft beer or a, an alcohol you want us to check out on the show. Let us know. And uh, we'll do our best to get it all on there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, uh, we are lining up some guests for the podcast very soon, as yep. well as the live shows. So be in tune for that. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Y'all have a good one, guys.